Stephen or Stephen, traditionally venerated as the protomartyr or first martyr of Christianity, was according to the Acts of the Apostles a deacon in the early church at Jerusalem who aroused the enmity of members of various synagogues by his teachings. Accused of blasphemy, at his trial he made a long speech denouncing the Jewish authorities who were sitting in judgment on him and was then stoned to death. His martyrdom was witnessed by Saul of Tarsus, a Pharisee who would later himself become a follower of Jesus. The only primary source for information about Stephen is the New Testament book of the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen is mentioned in Acts chapter 6 as one of the Greek-speaking Hellenistic Jews selected to participate in a fairer distribution of welfare to the Greek-speaking widows. The Catholic, Anglican, Lutheran, Oriental Orthodox and Eastern Orthodox churches venerate Stephen as a saint. Stephen's name is derived from the Greek language Stephanos, meaning crown, traditionally. Stephen is invested with a crown of martyrdom. Artistic representations often depict him with three stones and the martyr's palm frond. Eastern Christian iconography shows him as a young, beardless man with a tonsure, wearing a deacon's vestments, and often holding a miniature church building or a censer. Martyrdom Background Stephen is first mentioned in Acts of the Apostles as one of seven deacons appointed by the Apostles to distribute food and charitable aid to poorer members of the community in the early church. According to Orthodox belief, he was the eldest and is therefore called Archdeacon. As another deacon, Nicholas of Antioch, is specifically stated to have been a convert to Judaism. It may be assumed that Stephen was born Jewish. But nothing more is known about his previous life. The reason for the appointment of the deacons is stated to have been dissatisfaction among Hellenistic Jews that their widows were being slighted in preference to Hebraic ones in distribution of alms from the community funds. Since the name of Stephanos is Greek, it has been assumed that he was one of these Hellenistic Jews. Stephen is stated to have been full of faith in the Holy Spirit and to have performed miracles among the people. Acts chapter 6 verses 5, 8, it seems to have been among synagogues of Hellenistic Jews that he performed his teachings and signs and wonders, since it is said that he aroused the opposition of the synagogue of the freedmen, and of the Cyrenians, and of the Alexandrians and of them that were of Cilicia and Asia, Acts chapter 6 verse 9, members of these synagogues had challenged Stephen's teachings, but Stephen had bested them in debate. Furious at this humiliation, they suborned false testimony that Stephen had preached blasphemy against Moses and God. They dragged him to appear before the Sanhedrin, the supreme legal court of Jewish elders accusing him of preaching against the temple and the Mosaic law. Acts chapter 6 verses 9 to 14. Stephen is said to have been unperturbed, his face looking like that of an angel. Speech to Sanhedrin in a long speech to the Sanhedrin comprising almost the whole of Acts chapter 7. Stephen presents his view of the history of Israel. The God of glory, he says, appeared to Abraham in Mesopotamia, thus establishing at the beginning of the speech one of its major themes, that God does not dwell only in one particular building. Stephen recounts the stories of the patriarchs in some depth, and goes into even more detail in the case of Moses. God appeared to Moses in the burning bush, Acts chapter 7 verses 30 to 32, and inspired Moses to lead his people out of Egypt. Nevertheless, the Israelites turned to other gods, Acts chapter 7 verses 39 to 43. This establishes the second main theme of Stephen's speech, Israel's disobedience to God. Stephen faced two accusations that he had declared that Jesus would destroy the temple in Jerusalem and that he had changed the customs of Moses. The Roman Catholic Church states that street. Stephen appealed to the Jewish scriptures to prove how the laws of Moses were not subverted by Jesus but, instead, were being fulfilled. He denounces his listeners as stiff-necked people who, just as their ancestors had done, resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute? 
they even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. Acts chapter 7 verses 51 to 53. The stoning of Stephen thus castigated. The account is that the crowd could contain their anger no longer. However Stephen, seemingly now oblivious to them, looked up and cried, Look, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God, to the Sanhedrin. This claim that the recently executed Jesus was standing by the side of God, Acts chapter 7 verse 54, was such intense blasphemy that they rushed upon Stephen drove him outside the city to the place appointed, and stoned him. At this time Jewish law permitted the death penalty by stoning for blasphemy. The witnesses, whose duty it was to throw the first stones, laid their coat down so as to be able to do this. At the feet of a young man named Saul, later to be known as Paul the Apostle, Stephen prayed that the Lord would receive his spirit and his killers, be forgiven, sank to his knees, and fell asleep. Acts chapter 7 verses 58 to 60. Saul approved of their killing him. Acts chapter 8 verse 1. Views of Stephen's speech. Of the numerous speeches in Acts of the Apostles, Stephen's speech to the Sanhedrin is the longest. To the objection that it seems unlikely that such a long speech could be reproduced in the text of Acts exactly as it was delivered. Some biblical scholars have replied that Stephen's speech shows a distinctive personality behind it. It has often been observed that there are numerous divergences in Stephen's retelling of the stories of Israelite history and the scriptures where these stories originated, for instance. Stephen says that Jacob's tomb was in Shechem, Acts chapter 7 verse 16, but Genesis chapter 50 verse 13, Genesis chapter 50 verse 13, says Jacob's final resting place was a cave in Machpelah, at Hebron, Acts chapter 8 verse 1, there are at least five of these discrepancies which some scholars have seen as errors, others as deliberate, in order to make specific theological points. There are also theologians who suggested that this discrepancy may come from an ancient Jewish tradition which was not included in the scriptures or may have been popular among people of Jerusalem who weren't scribes. Numerous parallels between the accounts of Stephen in Acts and the Jesus of the Gospels, they both perform miracles. They are both tried by the Sanhedrin. They both pray for forgiveness for their killers. For instance, have led to suspicions that the author of Acts has emphasized in order to show the recipient that people become holy when they follow the example of Christ or invented some of these. The criticism of traditional Jewish belief and practice in Stephen's speech is very strong when he says God does not live in a dwelling made by human hands. Referring to the temple, he is using an expression often employed by biblical texts to describe idols. Most scholars agree that by doing this, Stephen pursues the aim of convincing all the people assembled that Jesus Christ is the Lord and therefore everything done against him or his teachings is practically against their own faith. Some people laid the charge of anti-Judaism against the speech, for instance the priest and scholar of comparative religion S. G. F. Brandon, who states, The anti-Jewish polemic of this speech reflects the attitude of the author of Acts, reputed tomb of Stephen. Acts chapter 8 verse 2, Acts chapter 8 verse 2, says, Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him, but the location where he was buried is not specified. In 415 AD a priest named Lucian purportedly had a dream that revealed the location of Stephen's remains at Beit Jimil. After that the reputed relics of the martyr were said to be preserved in the Byzantine Church of St. Stephen in Jerusalem, a church destroyed in the 12th century. A 20th century French Catholic church, Saint Etienne, was built in its place, while another Greek Orthodox Church of St. Stephen was built at the opposite side of the city. St. Stephen's Day Public holidays in Western Christianity, the 26th of December is called St. Stephen's Day, the Feast of Stephen, mentioned in the English Christmas Carol, Good King Wenceslas. 
It is a public holiday in many nations that were historically Catholic, Anglican or Lutheran including Austria, Croatia, the Czech Republic, Ireland, Luxembourg, Slovakia, Poland, Italy, Germany, Sweden, Denmark and Finland. In Australia, New Zealand, Canada and the United Kingdom, the day is celebrated as Boxing Day. Western Christianity and the current norms for the liturgy of the Roman Catholic Church, the feast is celebrated at the Eucharist, but, for the liturgy of the hours, is restricted to the hours during the day, with evening prayer being reserved to the celebration of the octave of Christmas. Historically, the invention of the relics of Saint Stephen was commemorated on 3 August. The feasts of both 26 December and 3 August have been used in dating clauses in historical documents produced in England, Eastern Christianity and the Eastern Orthodox Church and those Eastern Catholic Churches which follow the Byzantine Rite. St. Stephen's Feast Day is celebrated on December 27. This day is also called the third day of the Nativity. In the Oriental Orthodox Church's street, Stephen's Day is observed on January 8. Armenian liturgy in the Armenian Apostolic and Armenian Catholic Churches, St. Stephen's Day falls on December 25th, the day on which the Feast of the Nativity of Jesus falls in all other churches. This is because the Armenian churches maintain the decree of Constantine, which stipulated that the Nativity and Theophany of Jesus were to be celebrated on January 6. In dioceses of the Armenian Church which use the Julian calendar, St. Stephen's Day falls on January 7 and Nativity, Theophany on January 19. In the Eucharistic celebration on this feast day, it is traditional for all deacons serving at the altar to wear a liturgical crown, which is one of the vestments worn only by priests on all other days of the year, the crown being in this instance a symbol of martyrdom. Commemorative Places See also Saint Stephen's Cathedral Saint Stephen's Church Many churches and other places commemorate Saint Stephen. Among the most notable are Brisbane, Australia. Saint Stephen's Cathedral is the major Catholic place of worship. Saint Etienne, France, and numerous other places named Saint Etienne in the French-speaking world. Vienna, Austria, Stephensdom, the Cathedral of Saint Stephen, founded 1147 and seat of the Archbishop of Vienna, symbol of the city of Vienna and of Austria, has the tallest spire in Austria and is the centerpiece of Vienna. Rome, Santo Stefano, Rotondo, San Lorenzo Fuori la Mura, Old City of Jerusalem, the Lion's Gate, is also called Street, Stephanus Gate, after the tradition that Stephen's stoning occurred here, though it probably occurred at Damascus Gate. London, St. Stephen's Chapel in the Palace of Westminster was originally built in the reign of Henry III of England. It became the first site of the debating chamber of the British House of Commons. The tower that houses Big Ben, that was properly called the Clock Tower, was referred to as St. Stephen's Tower by Victorian journalists and others subsequently until it was renamed Elizabeth Tower to commemorate the Diamond Jubilee of Elizabeth II in 2013. St. Stephen's House, Oxford, permanent private hall of the University of Oxford and Anglican Theological College. St. Stephen's Church, Bristol, the first city church built outside the walls c. 1250, rebuilt c. 1430-1490. St. Stephen's Church, Kombutherai, built by St. Francis Xavier in India in 1542. St. Stephen's College, Delhi. St. Stephen's Church, Delhi and St. Stephen's Hospital, Delhi. St. Stephen's Green, Dublin, the largest of Dublin's George End Squares and itself named after a former leper hospital near the site.